Our Revo front suspension started out really as a blank piece of paper. Um, you know, the main goals were to have something that was easy to install, uh, had a small footprint, worked in a wide variety of applications with a pretty wide variety of engine and transmission combinations. We really took a lot of what we had learned on our fast track uh, muscle car suspension and we're able to apply that in designing a complete new suspension, really what the name says. It's a, a revolution in suspension from a engineering design strength and performance standpoint. Well, over the years we've had the pleasure as well as displeasure of using a lot of different front suspensions and uh, we found there's a lot of shortcomings on them. We've had you know, a lot of issues with not only performance but strength and durability some of those being actually you know, dangerous out on the roadway. And uh, what we set out to do here was just build an indestructible front suspension, something that you can be comfortable jumping in your car and driving it to any car show in the country. So strength, uh, you know, it's kind of been built overkill, which when you're battling potholes and rough streets, that's something that you, know, you can never have too much material there. With our control arms, we kind of went the same way that we did with the fast track. We wanted something really rigid and something that wasn't just your plain DOM tubing that was welded together. We used really heavy duty 1 and 5 eighths on the bottom 125 wall, and on the uppers we used 1 and a quarter 125 wall. We wanted to keep the ball joint end as compact as we could because we want anybody who's using a 15 inch retro wheel or something with a large backspace to still have an appropriate turning radius, something 40, 35 feet. So that way you're not fighting yourself in the parking lot every single time you go to park your car. From a performance standpoint, there's a, a lot of Mustang based suspensions out there and it's kind of a, it's been long overdue to correct the geometry on those. So what we did is kind of on a smaller scale mimic a lot of the performance geometry that we have in our fast track suspension, but we we're able to accommodate a 15 inch wheel with a smaller spindle. So it works real well for guys wanting to do more of a resto mod or a classic type vehicle. For the bushings on the Revo suspension, we decided to go with Delrin just uh, due to its compliance. We designed these 100% here in-house. It's firm, but it still soaks up a lot of those road bumps and any of that harsh feedback that you don't want resonating back up through the steering. The control arm mounts are all built in double shear and integrated into the crossmember itself and the lower control arm is mounted with a OEM style eccentric bolt. Uh, what this does is allows for a simpler installation and a lot easier alignment. The common upper control arm mount has a threaded uh, rod end on it that you have to take off, spin, put back on uh, to do your caster camber adjustments and your alignment of the vehicle. Uh, by moving it to the lower control arm and adding an eccentric you don't need to disassemble a thing on the suspension. You merely drive the car onto an alignment rack. You can put a wrench on the front bolt, a wrench on the rear bolt, and simply pivot the eccentric to dial in the caster and camber that you want. With the eccentrics that we designed, we wanted to get an acceptable range that would work for different types of track users or just daily drivers. So we designed the Revo suspension to run off three to six degrees of caster and within that range you're able to get anywhere from a degree of positive camber to negative three degrees of camber. So whether you're just driving around on the street or you want to do a little bit of auto crossing, you're covered within those limits. We, uh, we set out to really keep a close eye on the performance of this suspension. So it's uh, really uh, designed to just be a smooth riding, great feeling front suspension, but built into that is some great performance as well. Uh, we've paid close attention to where we've located the roll centers on this and we've plotted that all and things like camber curves have been really scrutinized and we've come up with the most ideal camber curve to give it uh, you know, kind of a high performance feel. So although it's not necessarily marketed as a all out performance front suspension, this suspension will hold its own with anything out on an autocross course along with giving you an outstanding smooth ride. Using SOLIDWORKS, we're able to track all the motion suspension throughout all of its travel, both in roll and ride height change. In doing that, we're able to completely eliminate bumps here, making sure that you have no adverse feedback up through the steering while you drive. It's uh, been a, a big issue over the years watching these power racks move from side to side as the bushings deteriorate. And what we wanted to do is kind of capture it with this double shear bracket on the front 
and uh, that not only gives you a better road feel, better stability in your steering, but it's also a, you know, a great safety part for the car. That steering rack is it's captured and secure in the chassis, and it's not going anywhere. The sway bar is something that we really wanted to, again, take from our fast track performance suspension. It's a one inch diameter. Uh, we use a 250 wall bar, and it's housed in a nice tight package to where it is just behind the cross member. By keeping the sway bar as close and tucked in as we can, you create a footprint that allows you to use any different oil pan combinations, gives you a lot more room in the bottom side. The placement of the coilover shock in the suspension has really been designed to optimize the motion ratio, keep that as close to one to one as possible. Uh, what this does is allows us to use a lighter spring and give you a smoother ride. The cross is designed as a modular unit that will drop into either a factory frame rail or into one of our Roadster Shop Revo chassis. We wanted to keep the installation as simple as possible for the builder and it was real important to us to have it built as a complete unit where the upper control arm and the lower control arm are all built on the same cross member which means that uh, the home builder he's not trying to locate the, an upper hat assembly. He's not responsible for maintaining the geometry of the front end. It's all fixed and there's no user error that can have any negative effect on that. So this front end is as simple as just installing two boxing plates and dropping it over your existing chassis and either rosette welding it into place or TIG welding it in place. Like any car that we build, we really have a big focus on the design and appearance uh, of the suspension and the cross member as well. You know, it's not just simply a piece of square tube that's miter cut and gets the job done. We really went to great lengths to make the cross member and the suspension components look like they belong in a custom vehicle. Uh, we've integrated positive and negative bump stops into the suspension. Um, if you were to ever bottom the suspension out, um, it takes all the load and disperses it through the bump stop rather than putting harsh loads on your suspension components like your control arms or your shocks. When you have the car on a lift, it's not going to have the suspension hang down past its uh, extended point and then put more stress on the shock. It also allows the shock to be easily taken in and out for spring changes without any load placed on it. When it comes time to ordering your Revo IFS, the options are on the brake end and the shock end. There's no upgrades to the control arms as we've built it with what we thought is the best of the best. What we were really focusing on is for one, the ease of installation, um, the functionality of it, the performance, and then uh, the strength. And uh, I think we were able to do all that here with the Revo IFS.